Hello, ladies. I'm V. Roberts from Temple Terrace. I'd like to begin by welcoming all of our campuses and, of course, our virtual campuses. I'm going to be speaking on Galatians, first chapter, verses 6 through 10. So before I begin, let me just give you a little history lesson on what's going on at that time. So this is Paul's letter to the churches of Galatia. And during this time, it's believed that he's in ministry for about 15 years. So he goes off on a mission trip. And while he's away, he hears that the churches of Galatia start to listen to other people's teachings. And let me just tell you, ladies, he is a little upset. So when you're reading Galatians, you'll notice that in the first two chapters, he really spends time addressing what is happening and what they're doing. And the language that he uses is really strong language. Now, the language is strong because he has a really good relationship with the churches, and he feels that he can use that language to really get across his point. So I'm going to start by reading my scripture, and I'm reading from the... Um, ESV version, and it says, I am astonished that you so quickly, deserting him who called you in grace in Christ and are turning to a different gospel. So the message version says, I can't believe your fickleness, how easily you've turned traitor. There's no sugarcoating it right there. You know that Paul is really upset that they have decided that they're gonna follow other teachings. He's thinking that, you know, really they're lacking allegiance or faith, you know, because Paul's word comes from God. So he knows that his word is solid, that he's using, that he's taught on this whole time. And I like to think about how would I feel if I said something and people believed it, and then I go away on a trip and I come back and people are doing their own thing, totally opposite what we talked about before I left. So I'm thinking that he must have been frustrated and just really that it must have hurt. Have you ever told someone something thinking that they believed you only to believe or find out later that they fact checked you? So they went someplace else to find out if what you said was really the truth. This makes me think about, we have four daughters and I've mentioned that before. Um, our oldest, between the oldest and our youngest, there's a 10 year age difference. I remember worrying when I was pregnant and in the early years that will they know each other? Will they like each other? And I have to say that all my worry was for nothing because they are the best of friends and have always been. But it's funny thinking back to when our youngest was really little. If she asked me a question and I answered it, she would quickly run to her sister and ask her, is that true? So if I said, Taylor, the sky is blue, she would run and say, Alexa, mom said the sky is blue, is the sky blue? And if Alexa said, yes, the sky is blue, then Taylor would come back and tell me, oh, okay, you're right, mom, the sky is blue. So <clears throat> she would always go for that confirmation and it always, back then I used to think like, well, why are you gonna ask me if you're gonna ask her? But it makes me think about how often we go to others to give us validation or to tell us things when we've already gotten that message from God. Second Corinthians 4, 6 says, it seems that if someone shows up preaching another Jesus than what we preached, different spirit, different message, you put up with him quite nicely. So I love this scripture because it reminds me so much of parenting. How easy is it that we can say something to our children and then they don't believe us until someone else tells us? So you say, oh, that looks really nice on you. But it's not until someone else says that looks really nice that they believe that. So I think that this is kind of how Paul felt during that time. In Galatians, we see that Paul is challenging the church. Why are they believing teachings that are not his teachings? His word comes from the Lord and they're easily to turn away from his teachings when they come into a time of trouble instead of staying the course, as they might say. It's kind of like my youngest daughter. She knew I was telling her, to tr her the truth, yet she was turning away from or almost questioning what I was saying to her and asking her sister so that she could seek her sister's approval and her sister's um, agreement 
in what I told her. Have you ever reached out to someone else or thought about this? How often maybe God has placed something on your heart or on your mind. Maybe um, he's placed a person and he's asked you to reach out to that person. Or maybe during your quiet time, he's asked you to do something and you haven't done that thing. Or maybe you go to someone else and you're like, you know, I kind of got this in my quiet time. Do you think that that's what God is trying to say? We are looking for human affirmation on something that we already have godly affirmation. So when I think about, if I asked you, and I'm gonna ask you, do you believe that what the Bible says is true? Do you believe the words in the Bible? And I know you're all nodding your head like, of course, V, I believe that, what the Bible says is true. But if you believe what the Bible says is true, do you believe when the Bible tells you that you are beautiful? Solomon 4, 7, you are altogether beautiful, my dar darling, there is no flaw in you. Do you believe when the word tells you that you are valuable? Proverbs 31.10, she is far more valuable than rubies. Do you believe that you are his daughter? Galatians 3.26, for in Christ Jesus, you are all sons and daughters of God through faith. Do you believe that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalms 139, 14, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So if you believe that everything in the Bible is true, why do we look for affirmation or approval from others to tell us that we are beautiful, that we are valuable, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made? Back in Galatians in verse seven, it says, not that there is another, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of God. There are some times when you just know, you know that God is speaking to you about a particular thing. Maybe he wants you to give up something, but you love that something and you just don't wanna give it up. Maybe he's been telling you to give up a relationship and you're just, you just feel like, I don't know, God, I don't know if I want to give up this relationship. But you're keeping him from being able to give you a greater blessing. Maybe in that relationship, you even go to your friends and you say, hey, girlfriend, do you think I should really give up this relationship, even though God has told me several times to give up this relationship? Again, here we are seeking affirmation and approval from others and not following what God has for us. In verses eight and nine, but even if we are an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. I don't know about you, but those two verses really, really got me. I, I think like, why isn't it just that easy? Why can't I just believe what God says and move forward? Why do I have to second guess or look for other people to tell me what God has already told me? We get so many contrary messages, but in Proverbs 30 verse five, it says, every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be a liar. So I mentioned before we are inundated with contrary messages. Maybe it was something that was said directly to you. Maybe someone told you that you weren't pretty or that you weren't beautiful or that you have no worth. Maybe it's something that we get from the media or just other messages. So I hold myself up to the litmus of the girls in the magazines or the people who have the perfect lives on social media. Ladies, I suffer too from not enough syndrome. I know, I know, I just created a whole nother disease, but it is not enough syndrome. I often wonder why I just can't hold on to what God tells me. 
and what his word says about me, that I am beautiful, that I am loved, that I have no flaws and that I am valuable and that I am more precious than any jewels. In verse 10, it says, for am I seeking approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I'm still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of God. That one hurts right here, right? Because we do, we try to please man and we're not looking to God for that validation. So I challenge you ladies today to look to God for your validation, not man. First Thessalonians, second chapter, fourth verse says, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak not to please man, so we speak not to please man, but to please God who tests our hearts. When we look to other sources for approval, we find ourselves lacking and empty, and we just don't measure up. When we look to God for approval, we find fulfillment, we find wholeness, and we find satisfaction. So I ask you ladies, are you seeking the approval of man or are you seeking the approval of God? Thank you.